So I was just gonna show you me moving some of these barrels out of the of my makeshift um, honey extraction unit. And I must reiterate. <laughs> I'll just show you this now. Let's turn it on its side so you can see it. Basically the whole wheel is warped. It's a pressed wheel. You see, you can see how warped it is. And the inside is just so it's not fit for purpose. And on this, on this, it's made to, I'm not gonna show the name, okay? Because I don't feel that's fair until I've got back to the company. The actual, piece of kit is extremely well designed and it works really well but the wheels they've got that they've got for the kit are just not up to it so the whole frame is brilliant but the actual wheels the the rear wheel is actually stronger than these two it seems because you can see the strength of that it's like massive bolts everything where this these ones are absolutely useless so i'm going to have to get in touch with the company it's a well-known company in france that did that do these uh, lo loaders, it's, get, it's actually registered to lift 400 kilos. I'm lifting about 280 to 290 kilos when I'm moving my barrels. So it technically should be able to deal with this easily, but there's no bearings in the wheels. They're just sitting on the spindle in the middle. So it's, a, it's not really up to the job. So I'm not very happy at all. However, it works fine and to a point, but imagine if that wheel had broken when I was holding 300 kilos on the, the machine itself. Not really what I'm looking for. But anyway, there you go, that's something to sort out. Regarding the building, things are progressing well. I've passed one big hurdle, so I can hopefully claim back now the VAT when I start purchasing. But there's a lot of other steps on the way, um, but they're all kind of just slowly working through their process as they do as, you know, I'm, I was desperately naive when I started this project thinking once we got planning permission, it's going to be easy, you know. But um, uh, I moved out last night uh, five barrels. Then I'm in my store um, in the cool. It's cool in here. I mean, it's not too hot to store honey, but the main thing is I wanted just to make more room because I need to do a few more things. And what I'm doing at the moment is I've just made up a special little barrel of for waste that what I do is this is how I clean my frames that have dry pollen in. So every now and again, you get a few that you miss and I'd, I'd usually clean these out over last winter. What you're looking at now, this is pollen that's dried and it proper like the bees proper lies it up inside the frame. So this was all honey here. And all here, you can see it was all honey there, but the bees didn't put any honey here because it was full of propolized pollen and they just cap it over. So what you do is you basically scrape this out. This isn't my ideal scraper. I can't find my other scraper for the minute, but you kind of use this barrel like this so it keeps everything inside. Just scrape it off like that. Do both sides, you obviously get pretty quick at it when you're doing a few. You can see a lot of it comes out anyway because it's dry. So we'll do both sides. You can see that. And then what I'll do is I'll pressure wash this. So that will get all this out and then needs to go back in to be built on tens again. And that is the cycle. So some people ask me, so some people ask me why I use eights and not just nines and tens, which is a standard. Because as I showed you before, in all my previous videos, if you build on nines or tens, which we use tens preferably like this. So this is a 10. These are all built up this spring. A little bit of crystallized honey, but they're all gonna go into eights. I'm actually starting to convert these now and they're easy to convert because all the screw holes are still open, okay? So even though that's not completely built, it's built enough, because it's gonna be that one, for example, look. One side's built more than the other, but because it's between 
two frames that are completely drawn out. If I put that into an eight configuration in the same size box, eight frames rather than 10, it will mean the bills will build wider frames. And if you look at my photos of, which I'll show you now, of the harvest time, you seem to have more efficient, well, you seem to have more efficiency, I should say, when you use eights. That's just my point of view. It kind of works for me. It's what I've been taught. When you do come to extract, you're using and handling less frames with technically more honey in. So there's two frames less in one box with wider frames of honey. So I try and kind of explain to people why I do that. Now, there is quite a bit of work around that, but when you come to harvest time, there's two things I find. One, it's obviously a lot quicker to harvest eights than it is to harvest tens. And as you saw there, tens, ten, tens, when they're being rebuilt, tend to be built with sometimes not quite enough on one side and more the other. But that's the only way we can get those built. But but what they do, the end result is they're built out enough so that when we put them into the eight configuration after, they then are drawn out like normal eights. They just don't build between. And my point is, we keep a number of boxes in tens and, and obviously the majority in eights, and we obviously flick between the two. So when I clean off frames, I'll pressure wash them and put them back into, the, into a few tens, get them rebuilt in the spring. But overall, the overall global kind of way of looking at it is I feel that we do better with eights because you have better efficiency. The second thing is I feel that when you're harvesting honey that's in tens for me that's okay so i'll just reiterate when you're harvesting honey that's in boxes with 10 frame configuration i feel that you get more crystallization in that 10 frame configuration i don't know it's because it's taken longer for the wax to be built because they're rebuilding the frames and therefore there's been some slowing down of the um the, the whole process because when they build on eights the, the frames are already built and they just puff up and up they go you can put another one on put another one on and you've got that volume of bees when they build on tens they're using a lot of honey to actually build out that wax as they put wax into it so my point is i don't know whether having them on tens actually induces more crystallization or early crystallization because the only crystallization really i had was in the tens and it was very little the amount but it was still a little bit so kind of uh, you know it's a balance so um anyway that's just some little background into why i clean out my frames and how i keep the pollen out the other thing you can do is when you're putting your honey frames on, especially in the summer when you get lots of pollen. The spring, they tend to explode so much, you don't get so much pollen. Summer tends to be the time you get more pollen in your supers if you do get any. But what you can do is you can put a square of plastic over the middle section of the top of the brood nest, okay? This is obviously the super, but imagine this was a brood nest. You put a square or even a circle just here. And any bees coming up with pollen will generally not come up and put pollen in that area. They might go around and do it, but generally it, it kind of blocks them from doing it. And what you'll find often is when you see pollen going in, where they put it, they'll actually leave two or three of the frames in the centre that they haven't built for honey because they think that there's a brood nest going to be, because they expect the queen to go up and they prepare an area for the queen in the top middle two or three frames. And often you'll see loads of honey here and loads of honey here, but these three frames in the middle will have less and the middle bit won't have any in at all, as if they're waiting for the queen to come up. Obviously she can't, and they prepare the area by depositing pollen in it. So if you can just say, no, no pollen above here with a piece of plastic, it does actually work. And it does pay off a little bit to just try that. You will find it does reduce the amount of pollen going up into the supers. We don't generally get a lot, but when we do, it's a complete pain because often over the winter, it doesn't uh, get eaten by the pollen mites. And I've talked about pollen mites before when I've been cleaning out frames before. 
you if you have pollen mites in great enough numbers and the weather's really damp this is my personal opinion if it's a really damp moist winter often the pollen mites can go right through the whole of your hives and take out all that loose pollen and it ends up being a powder so you can tap out the the powder and when the bees come to clean out those supers in the spring you hardly see any problems like I've, that I've just shown you because most of the the hard pollen has softened and the pollen mites have eaten it over the winter and all you get is the dust and the bees can clean out that dustiness, the yellow powder, okay? But in, in winters where it's really dry and if you've got your frames stored in a good area that's dry, they've been cleaned by the bees before they've gone into the winter and then they just sat there and there's, there's loads and loads of um, supers in the same area and it's been really dry, often the pollen mites don't seem to get in. And what happens is you get then the following year, the bees will propolize it over. And then you get that problem where you've got a part of the frame that's missing. So I've got some pictures here I'll show you. I took uh, the classic picture of what happens the following year when the bees propolize it over and they just build around the um, prop, they build around the bit that's got pollen in because they can't yank it out. So they go, right, let's just seal this up. And then they build this weird shaped frame and it looks crazy. And you've lost production from that frame. But that is unfortunately one of the problems you get. And it's something you have to kind of be used to dealing with. So you scrape it off, pressure wash it when you've got a quieter time and then get them rebuilt on the tens. And that's the problem with managing your super frames is you want to keep a rotation. You obviously want old wax in preference because that's already been bought and paid for by the bees so you want to maintain it and you want to give the bees the chance of using that again but it has to be clean so you've got to just get that balance between giving them old stuff giving them some new to build and maintaining what you've got at the end of the season these honey soup for example so say this, the honey was off now and we're in the second part of the flow these supers then go back onto another hive that is queen right. We'll give them a feed and then on top of that go these supers and you can put four or five hive but above the feeder. So when the feed's gone, the bees come up from the bottom and clean all the rest of the feed out and then they go up into the supers. But it's not a hell for leather fighting robbing scenario. It's completely enclosed because you're giving four or five supers to each colony because it just basically means you can get them all cleaned out slowly. Now I don't always do that because because time is an issue here and it means you've got to take a lot of supers to one apiary but if you can put four or five on in an apiary with 20 hives that's you know that's 100 supers cleaned instantly and it, when you leave supers to be robbed out at the end of the year often they're in a complete state because the, the bees are fighting with the wasps and they're tearing the they're tearing at the comb to get at the, the, the scraps of honey that are left. Whereas if you get... So you can see here, I've changed it for the eights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the previous one was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it is so obvious this, but just to say, it's the same size box with less frames in it. But because the frames are built already, they won't build in between them when we built them on the tens. And I'm going to leave it at that because I know you're probably sick of me telling you about this, but it works really well for us. And it's a way of using less resources to get more honey. But you've got to work at it and build that frame volume first. So that's about it. Bye for now.